It always, it always dings me as I'm in the middle of saying our first words. <laughs> and that's how they get you. We're live now. I think we're good. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay, 278. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. This is episode 278. My name is Hayam. There's the ding that says we're live on Twitch in the middle of it. And Tom is over there. And there's the other ding from Mac OS telling me the same thing. So it's been a while. Again, it's I feel like every story that we see is ransomware, cryptocurrency, pump and dump, and that's it. Did you buy some squid uh, crypto coin? I did not. No, I, I definitely missed that train before the developers uh -huh. uh, decided to take the bag and leave everybody holding nothing. Are you hoping that AMC does Shibu Inu coin for uh, payments at the movie theater? Uh, you know, I I used to be kind of in this middle ground of cryptocurrency where I wasn't like all about a million and a half blockchain companies. Like, honestly, blockchain seems like a solution in search of a problem for the vast majority of things. If you need a distributed ledger without a central trust, okay, blockchain might work for you. If you're looking for a database, no, find something else. If you're looking for a get rich, uh, get rich quick scheme, uh, yeah, you might find it. Uh, maybe if you're exceedingly lucky, but probably not. You're probably just going to lose a bunch of money. Um, so at this point, I think I'm becoming a, a cryptocurrency hater. Just the whole deal. Like I'm still holding. I've I've got Bitcoin. I. Uh, but I don't see the utility. I I don't have a romantic view of cryptocurrency anymore. Uh, if anything, I see it only just causing a lot of bad. Uh, but that's that's a totally different topic. I haven't seen any really novel or unique applications of cryptocurrency other than uh, just people trying to get rich quick. That's it. It's people are saying this is the future. I, I don't know. You remember this. Beanie Babies were a form of currency that was never going to go away. Yep. I, I want to bring that. I, I, I liken cryptocurrency to the Beanie Baby trend. It yeah. was never, ever, ever going to go away. And this was an investment in your kid's college. And then it's worthless. So, look, I, I also have some cryptocurrency. Keybase gave us some cryptocurrency. I'm very thankful they did because it's doing real well. But um, I put some of my really disposable income, and this is the PSA of the evening. If anything you invest in cryptocurrency, expect to lose. So that's how I deal with it. I also like you hold until I get very old and it's worthless probably at that point. So I don't know. I put money in, it goes up and then I want to take it out, but I don't want to because it continues to go up, but I do know it's going to go down. So anyway, Agreed. there's our spiel. Cryptocurrency is like uh, investing in a slot machine and that's how you should treat it. Right? Chances are... You're going to pull that lever and you're just never going to see that money again. Like just it, as soon as you can embrace that fact that you're quite literally lighting a pile of money on fire to invest. Cool. Um, now, if you're OK with that, if you're OK with playing the numbers. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, but don't expect to make this your retirement. Just don't. It might be, right? it. but chances are not. Look, if you want to do something risky and take some risk, that's fine. I do like the NF I do like NFTs and the artwork idea. I really do. Um, I think the the valuations of the artwork currently is is beyond ludicrous. Like, you want to invest in some digital art? I guess that's okay. But I, I like those ideas. But as you said, I, I haven't found a need for a decentralized ledger that stores data. Usually, I mean, all these problems can be solved. Can just one person deal with it and just make sure that one person is not a terrible person or a company or whatever it is. So anyway, 
I don't know. That's our spiel, but that's that's the reason. So we go these weeks because we don't hear anything. We hear that there this scam. We hear Microsoft can't patch Windows fast enough. Um, there Forbes reports that that Chrome is going to kill all of us, or it's going to like leak all our data, and it happens every week, and then nothing really happens. I don't know. There's a zero day in Android. There's a zero day in Apple, and it's just one of those things. Like, do we really need to discuss that? Uh, just other than updating everything. But we did get some news yesterday or the day before out of my home state of New Jersey. So in iOS 15, one of the things that they wanted to push was putting your uh, digital wallet together. Um, they wanted to put your driver's license in your Apple wallet so you can, I guess, presumably have that on you. But New Jersey never likes to do the thing that everyone wants. They're now allowing you to do your digital registration. And so if you don't know what your registration is, it's the thing in the car that you pay a tax on to allow you to drive your car. So it's not car insurance. It's not the license. It's literally a tax to drive your car. So the state of New Jersey knows that you've paid this tax. And when you get pulled over and the officer says license, insurance, and registration, please, that they want to put the registration on. Now, for most people... I think 99% of the people, they leave the ins- the registration in the insurance in the car. Sometimes people take it with you, but they leave it there. And so when the officer asks for your registration, you go into your glove box and you pull it out and you hand it to them. So I don't know why the registration on the iPhone is good other than, is this a first step? Yeah, I out of everything to keep on your phone, Car registration strikes me as kind of odd. Um, I, I know, I know, just about every major insurance company now offers digital cards, which are t- to me a little bit more helpful. I mean, my insurance cards also the paper version stay in my glove box, but I have been in places like renting a car at an airport in a strange city I've never been to, uh, where I have needed to pull up my insurance cards just to hand, right. Um, so, yeah, having, you know, easily accessible digital equivalents are nice. And, you know, it, having it in an app is arguably better or worse than just having a screenshot or a PDF on your phone. Frankly, I love having the PDF on my phone because I can just email it wherever I need to. Um, but, yeah, car registration. The only time anyone is ever looking at my car registration is a cop and when I'm pulled over. Like, that's that's it. Um, and. I would be very hesitant to hand a police officer my phone uh, because they have been, um, I don't want to say caught. That's the wrong word. Uh, but uh, they, they have been uh, known to use um, Celebrate machines and, and basically uh, systems that they can plug your phone into to try to hack it and grab a bunch of data. Uh, whether that's text messages or photos or whatever, uh, the Celebrate machines try to grab anything and everything they can um, off of your devices. Uh, so what what this means is that um, if your phone isn't up to date, uh, or if Celebrate has a zero day, which they have had a few, um, or or something like that, a, a police officer could take your phone if it's not powered off, and grab a bunch of data from it, which you probably don't want. So handing your phone to a cop, not the brightest idea in my book. Well, I mean, I, I, I discussed this in class today. I was saying, you're being pulled over, right? You, like, you're being pulled over. So a police officer, law enforcement has a reason. Like, there's some cause there. They pulled you over for a reason. And now you're saying, here, officer, take my phone. And maybe a text message pops up. Wait a second. A text message pops up where you were just having a conversation. What is this Google Maps? What is this Apple Maps? What are these maps? Were you touching it while you were like, so I didn't think of it. So I, we shared, by the way, I shared this article on the Signal Group and I was like, way to go, New Jersey, for getting us something we don't really need, but I guess I'll take it. Like I will. And everyone jumped on me like, no, I don't want to do this. And, and there are, and we discussed ways of doing it securely, but. Again, at the end of the day, I don't know if I want to do it. The the thing I find so stupid about registration is that the one time I got, I one of the few times I got pulled over, the officer goes, "Can I see your registration?" And I'm thinking, "You have it. Like you pulled me over." And he goes, and I said, "Um, "Yeah, here it is." And he goes, 
this is not the right one. I go, what are you talking about? This is, it's the one on the top. And he goes, it's expired. And I go, how? I just got this car. And I learned that your registration doesn't renew with the new car, renews with the old car. And so I got a ticket for not having registration. And he took my PBA card, which for the people not in New Jersey, that's the, that's the get out of jail free card that your police officer friends give you. And I didn't know, and he still, you don't know what you did wrong? No, officer. I, this is the story. I literally told you the story. I didn't do it on purpose. Well, I'm not going to give you the big fine. They have the registration. He ran my plates at the light and saw that my registration was expired. So they clearly has it. So what's the point of that other than to pull me over? Anyway, so yes, I give, you give the phone. And, and, and this goes to one of the things now, like you said in the beginning, you don't want to give this to a police officer. And then I see, well, I kind of want my license on my phone, but that also involves the same thing, right? The license and any of your other personal information. Yeah. Now, license, I could see the argument for, um, you know, as as a person who likes food, um, I happen to be a, a human individual who occasionally uh, visits bars and or restaurants to consume nutrients, as one does. Uh, but I would like to get a beer and I don't want to carry around a wallet. Right. I've got Apple Pay already. I've got everything on my phone. I, if I could just carry this guy and show you know the the bartender the the waiter um you know hey here's my id i would like a beer um that would be way more convenient uh unfortunately there's not like there are ways of doing that securely and defending against fakes but um no state uh at least in the u.s has been able to pull it off quite successfully that i've seen uh, so yeah, I can see the argument for driver's license because it's useful in way more situations than just a traffic stop. But registration is one of those that's literally useful in, as far as I can tell, literally that only exact single scenario. No other place do you need your registration. <laughs> like even when, when renewing your registration, you don't bring the old one. You just bring your driver's license. And they're like, oh yeah, this is you. How much money are you going to pay to renew? Is that one year or two year? Uh, and that's it. That's the only question. Um, so, yeah, this kind of seems like uh, I don't Let's want do to. The... I don't want to ascribe anything to somebody, but this this really smells like a solution in search of a problem. Like, hey, yeah. here we want to do something cool with technology and show the young people we're hip. Car registration on your phone. Look at this. How cool and hip. Uh, and it doesn't solve any problems. I mean, I'm kind of thinking that the DMV should just finally create an app that puts all this together. <laughs> like, this will end well, but... <laughs> I was going to say, I, I like what you're saying. And in theory, what you are saying is spot on and probably should happen. The actuality of, of <laughs> any, any motor vehicle department creating an app is just going to be miserable. That's it. They will find a way to make you stand in line to use their app. The, the, I, I mean, the, the point is, I just got my license renewal, and, and it's like, please skip the line. It's like, before you come, did you do this? You can probably do it online. And mm. you're like, no, I want to go in line. No, are you sure you really want to go in line? Because we can renew your license here. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, do you still, you check the box. You check the wrong box. You check the box that you wanted to come in. We assure you, you don't have to come in. So <laughs> at least in New Jersey, the DMV is really, really trying to get you to not come in. Um, what they are making you do is, oh, by the way, you want to do this, but this is not the new real ID. That you have to come mm. in for. And oh, by the way, we have no slots until after real ID needs to be implemented. So you're still screwed for that. But that's a different story. Um, I was going to say, I've been asking my friends, I would like an Apple wallet for non-secure stuff. So, so I do have loyal, like, why can't I make an album? And I'll tell you that Apple found a way to do something like this. And I'm sure Android has it. Well, like I want to take all my loyalty cards and put them all on an album so I can just swipe through them. But I'd much rather an Apple wallet style or a Google pay style, like fake wallet, skew morphic wallet where I can just yeah. touch the cards. And this would be great. 
and apps started doing that, but none of them did it even like they were all Fs. Like I there was no D minuses in that mm-hmm. bunch. Nothing ever did it well. Where somebody's trying to scan something because that's what you want to do. You want to go and you want to scan it. You don't need it to be cryptographically secure. Like the gym where I go, the YMCA, they're like, take a picture on your phone and hold that up. It works for us. And I'm like, really? You're going to tell me to do that? They're like, yeah, why wouldn't we? And I'm like, why can't CVS and Rite Aid and Walgreens and ShopRite and Kroger's and, and Whole Foods, why can't they do that? And nobody wanted to make this. But recently we found out, at least on iPhone, and I know Android has this somewhere, you can create hidden albums. So what I did is I took my vaccine card and you can, on iOS, you can, uh, you can share to hit or hide. It's called share and then you hide. And in albums, it's under a hidden album. That's awesome. So now I can take my passport photo and my driver's license photo and I can store it there. So when I do have to present it in a non-official way, I can do it. So that's what I do like. And I wish that there's that middle ground of like insecure cards, but yeah, that would be really nice. Registration. I'm with you though. The only time I have seen those like loyalty or store cards work even a little bit well is this is going to sound weird and Seattleite of me. Uh, my, my Starbucks app, it's beautiful. Like I, I just, I have it on my watch. It's in my Apple wallet. I just hold the thing up to the reader. It, dings and that's it that's that's all it takes i don't need to do anything else it doesn't need to be complicated the problem is is that all these companies have apps you have a whole screen of yeah of apps that you have to go through and you talk about starbucks dunkin donuts makes you to get your rewards you have to pay through the app it means you have to get money on your app so it's one of those things that that you have to keep on doing and and so now you have money in different places. But look, the whole security element is I would like to have Apple has shown, and even for Google for that matter, is that they can keep things secure with either face ID or touch ID in a better setting than like, I mean, I'm probably gonna lose my wallet before I lose my phone, I think. If that were to happen, I think that's what happens. And in my phone, I know it's locked and I know it's there and I know everything else. And I want that, but I want to control it. You're right. I don't want to give my phone. I get very nervous when I hand my phone to somebody. Like I am watching them. Like what you, you're swipe. What are you doing? Like I showed you a picture. Like don't move from it. That's it. Don't. You're yeah, done. You don't. You don't swipe. That is a that is a new <laughs> social faux pas. When somebody hands you a phone with a photo on it, you look at the photo. You don't touch anything, and then you hand it back. And I still find the people like, oh, it dimmed. Can you undim it? And I'm like, you're reading an article. Like, you have the same phone I do. Why, why can't you? So it's, it's one of those things that I would like some sort of secure method, like Apple Wallet, which is awesome, or uh, Google Pay. But I also want like an, unsec- an insecure wallet that's just locked by whatever, Face ID, or put a pin code in. Sure, put a pin code in. What do I care? And, and have all the other loyalty cards or your driver's registration. And I lo- like even your social security card. What I love is that social security card is a little piece of paper. It's like the thinnest piece of paper. And that is legal somehow. There's fibers in it. I don't know. That's legal. I, I, want my so- I love the, the social security number and social security card in the United States. So basically, because uh, I, I do know we have a lot of international uh, yeah. listeners and viewers. Um, basically, the social security number in America was never designed to be a national ID. It was expressly designed specifically to not be a national ID. You don't need it for anything except for official tax paperwork and to collect a social security check when you reach retirement age. That is it. That is what it was designed for. It was never meant to be a national ID system. So much so that the card you got with the number on it is intentionally flimsy and stupid and something that will get like mangled, destroyed, crumpled up on this flimsy little piece of paper that you are going to lose. It is designed to be trashed, essentially. Uh, But because it was a super convenient way of just assigning numbers to citizens in the United States, everybody jumped on the bandwagon of using it as an ID. And because everybody is using it as an ID, everyone else had to follow suit because it's a convenient centralized system, even though it's not supposed to be used that way. And now we have things like LifeLock, parading around social security numbers and saying we'll protect you and they don't do any. 
Uh, just letting you know, I was a former customer of LifeLock who literally did nothing, and I will not cease my endless barrage, uh, barrage of dunking on that company. Now they're, they're from, now Norton owns them. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I don't know if that, I don't know <laughs> if that helps you. I don't know if that makes you think any more or less of them. No, nah, it's, it's really like the two, the two levels of respect I have for both of those brands basically equal out. So yes, it makes sense. It would be like if or Walmart ch- teamed up with McDonald's, like, okay, all right, I get it. So it's. It's, it's one of, so, I mean, I would like myself, but again, you're right. I don't, now in the last, whatever, 10 years, people have started realizing that nobody should be asking you for your social security number. So that's pretty much changed. But there were a lot of people who carry their social security number in their wallet. And the answer was now, in the, like I said, in the last, whatever, 10 years, 15 years, nobody's asking for it. But it goes back to, I think it goes back to, I think we do need a system where we can put stuff in a secure enclave on the phone where we can pull it up. And people say, well, you can do that with LastPass or Bitwarden or whatever it is, but that's not convenient enough. Like you said, you want to go to the bar, you want to go someplace, and I want to just carry my phone. I, I'm, we're almost there. We're almost there that I can carry my phone. I want it to start my car. I, well, maybe I don't. I don't know yet. But, but your, phone, the, your phone can apparently start the Teslas. Like, okay. Um, but I want to just have my phone. Why have my phone? Why sell me like a, a back to the phone that I can store a couple of credit cards? I just want the phone. And I get annoyed when I have to take out my wallet or whatever it is. I want my phone to work and I want those those things there and I want some way to secure them. And And I do like all these Apple wallet type things. And I wish more companies would get behind it. But let's find it. Let's find a, like, what did you say? A problem. Let's find a, a problem that we can get, come up with a solution for. And maybe New Jersey, let's give New Jersey some credit, which doesn't deserve a lot. Maybe they're saying this is the first step. Like we want to see if this works. If this works with the registration on it, maybe we'll do it. Maybe it'll be easier for us to do something else. It is the lowest barrier to entry. We can do this. The problem is I'm waiting for students to be like, or, or college students or whatever. Hey, I have my ID on my phone. Um, can you present your ID? Oh, hold on. I have to take my phone out. I have to do this. I have to do that. Like in corporate, you, do you have to wear your ID at your company? Like when you go into work, do you have to wear an ID or you just have to buzz in and that's it? Yes. To all of it. You're, you're supposed to wear it. You're supposed to present it. Um... There's a lot of regulations around your ID, but that that said, it's been like nearly two years since I've been uh, to my company's office. So, well, uh, at our school, it's it's one of those things you have to wear your ID around your neck when you're in the hallways and everything else. And so now students are like, "Well, I'm going to keep it in my wallet." So every time you're asked to present it, which is when you leave the room, you have to take out. You got to stop. You got to throw the security guard a dirty look. You have to get out your wallet. You have to show this. And I'm thinking maybe the phone is at least a simpler answer. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And, and there are other ways, but I think having, I, I think the initial thing of handing your phone to somebody who is not, who may or may not have your best interest is not the right angle. However, having it on there or having it or a driver's license to show other people may be a good first step in moving towards this more digital world. There, there are ways of being able to hand over a phone with that kind of information displayed on the screen secure uh, or more secure, um, right? One, one thing that, uh, that I do want to start preaching is that security is not binary. There is not insecure and secure, right? There's, it's, the whole thing is great. It's all variations. Um, but there's a way to do this in a more secure fashion. Um, both Android and iOS now have basically different layers, different levels of file encryption on the phone, right? Like your your app data for uh, your your stock messaging app that's not end to end encrypted um, has a very different layer of encryption than like your photos, right? Um, this is why when first booting your your telephone, you can get notifications from some apps, but not all of them. Uh, and that's actually on purpose. There, there's basically um, certain levels of encryption in the way Apple does it at a very high level. This is super basic and oversimplified. Uh, it's basically when you power on the phone, that's one level. 
and then it makes you type in a pin code to enable Face ID. Um, now, what that pin code does unlocks a lot of the other apps that are more sensitive, uh, according to Apple uh, or app developers, uh, on where they want that placed in, in the hierarchy. Um, and then there is the, you know, my phone is locked, but Face ID is enabled. And then there is my phone is completely unlocked and open and on the um, after you have authenticated through a PIN or Face ID. And that's, you know, theoretically everything is open at that point. Um, so there's a way to be able to show an ID on the screen and say, okay, we're going to void out of memory um, and, and block all the file handles for every other piece of data on this phone. We're just going to show you the one thing and make the phone do a full pin-based reauthentication to unlock the other parts of the file system, to unlock the other data. And there's a way to do this where you could theoretically hand over your phone with an ID and have that be more secure uh, than just handing over an unlocked phone. Uh, now, to my knowledge, all the pieces are there, but I don't think Apple nor Android have really uh, enabled those features or uh, presented them in such a way where that would be trivial uh, for a developer to take advantage of. So we've got all the building blocks, and we could make something like that. Uh, I just haven't seen it put together yet. Uh, but there are ways of solving this problem. I'm just, you just uh, flaked out, but. Oh, sorry. But I, I, but I know I, what you're saying. Uh, yeah, there, there are ways of solving this particular problem. You're still, uh, you're still cyborging there, I guess. Okay. Nope, not yet. So the good news is I think it's coming through properly on uh, the Twitch recording. Um, so uh, the, re the recording should be fine. I think it's coming through Robotty on your end, but I can drop and come back in. So, so let's give Tom one more second. There we go. How's that? Because I'm watching the clock. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I mean, you're there, but you're not really there. Well, anyway, uh, whatever. What, let's see if Tom comes back. But anyway, I think the Tom's right. They have all this, all the steps there. They're just we're waiting, and I don't know what we're waiting for, but. I want to start seeing some movement and if, and if the stupid digital registration is the first sign of it, that's fine. But I think we need to make, then we need to make privacy laws. And I guess we didn't really talk about that privacy laws on what, let's say law enforcement or somebody can ask you for on your phone. Does it open a probable cause to somebody else? Um, what's the problem if all of a sudden a message comes in that says, are we smoking marijuana tonight at our drug stop or thanks for a great night at the bar? Are you sure we're drunk? Does that lead to another problem in that, in that case? So, so I, I don't know what, what the next step is from there, but I hope it does that. Um, Tom, are you there? I am. I think. Uh, no. You're not. Okay. On my I end, you're not. So. So I'm going to let you, I'm just going to end it and uh, we'll see everyone next week. And if the recording is working, maybe we'll go from there, but I'll pull off the recording. But if not, we're going to end slightly early and I'm sorry for the little audio issue, but maybe twit crossing my fingers that Twitch works. So everyone let's say bye and we'll have a good night. So bye everybody. Okay. We're off.